Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the March 2019 1v1 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, and we have round two, which is going to be the first match of the day or for round two. This one is going to be Uncast versus FFC. Players we haven't seen, well, I haven't actually seen Uncast ever. I think they're reasonably new. I don't know. They commented on my channel recently. I was like, okay, cool. So I guess you're someone new. And maybe they're not. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Not sure. But it's pretty neat. So we have possibly a new player, and we have FFC. And the two of them are going to be doing a game where they fight each other to try to figure out who gets a win and who doesn't in this tournament. Because that's how tournaments work. Sorry, that's... I'm just blanking on stuff. Anyway, yeah, so we are going to be seeing FFC versus Uncast on 15 platforms. We haven't... I have never streamed this map. Ever. I honestly don't really know what to expect here because, well, it's... It's entirely new. It's just, it's a new map. It's a map I haven't seen. It's also apparently really hard on my GPU, but that's surprising. I wonder if the, ah, there's the fog effect. Anyway, we are going to be having Uncast going for Cloaky and Spiders for FFC, which kind of makes sense. I mean, this is a cliffy map, though. I don't, is there anything under? No, it's, well, actually, there is actually. The spiders could theoretically go in between. Huh. I'm actually kind of curious how they deal with that, because I don't know if this area here is, like, water or something that can't be crossed. As far as I can tell from the pathfinding, no, it it can't be crossed. Oh, it's a void. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That's what you do. Void, water. Makes sense. So, yeah, Uncast very rapidly going for the expansion here. And FFC, on the other hand, mostly building up their own base. I mean, getting the scouting going, getting their base going. That shouldn't be too big of a problem. Yeah, Uncast, I think they're going to have a reasonably good time here. The thing with 15 platforms, because it has the Void Water, spiders aren't going to be that much more effective than anything else. I mean, there are some high ground areas that spiders could use for ambushes, but broadly speaking, there aren't really the sort of cliff elements that you can work from with spiders as easily as most maps. So I don't expect this map to be... Or I don't expect it to be a very easy match for FFC, just because spiders do have a bit of a hard time against Cloakies when played properly. But that's assuming Uncast decides to go for Heavy Ronin. And it looks like they're going more for Glaive. They want to maintain that mobility so that it can get around the map and very easily deal with whatever FSC plans to do. And I get that. I respect that. But as a general rule, when you're fighting the Spiderbot Factory as Cloaky Bots, you do want to get some Ronin. Because the Ronin counter Venoms, and they do a good job dealing with basically everything other than Recluses. Which Glaives can deal with, no problem. So if you build Ronin... You don't have to worry about too much from the Spider Factory. If you build Glaives, then Venoms become a problem, Redbacks become a problem. It Fleas aren't a problem, but they're not going to be built into Cloaky. Not very much, anyway. So, I would expect a lot of Venom at this point. Might as well. It's a good choice against Cloaky. As you see right now, the first Venom coming in here, taking out this, this single Glaive, and that is going to be that dead Glaive. There is no saving that Glaive. It's dead. It's gone. Goodbye, Glaive. It was nice knowing you. Hopefully you'll have a better life as whatever you reclaimed into. Ooh, and then FFC. I like this. I really like this. Use the top platforms. What What is the range here? 0.62.5. Oops, that's efficient. I like it. It's like not the best possible, but hey, for this map, this is a pretty low map, so that was clever. On the other hand, FFC, if they also get spiders. They can do this everywhere. It's actually really clever now that I think about it. Uncast did go for a Recon Commander, so they do have the option of doing this. I'm not sure they're going to go for it, though. I feel like they're probably going to just stick to what they have, because right now, Uncast, they're playing kind of defensively. It feels like they're a li little unsure about how to deal with this. I seem to be a little bit uncertain about whether or not they're going to be able to build much or build out much. I mean, they really if they just expand, they should be fine. But I can see why they would be a little bit hesitant. So at this point, I would say, you know, Oncast, just don't worry about it too much. Just go in there and it'll be fine. Like, it, it, just start harassing a little bit, see what's going on. Take out some of FFC stuff. They have some defenses, but not much. Overall, a lot of this is pretty naked. The only problem is, of course, these Venoms, which, again, that's where Ronin come in. And we have Ronin, Warrior, or Ronin Reaver building up. So this is being dealt with. Like, Ronin Reaver is definitely a, a solution. That's what I would go for. But, yeah, this is going to be 
again, still kind of tricky. Flea is coming in. Getting rid of one of Uncast's expansions. One of Uncast's few expansions. Which, again, I do consider to be a little bit long. Okay, so this is the thing here. I don't agree with having pulled this Conjurer back. Normally, I will say rebuild quickly. But at this point, Uncast had a reasonable amount of control over this platform. It's just a long trek back to rebuild that metal extractor and then build up this. I would have sent, like, send in a different constructor to do Like, send in this... Not this one. That was one of the before. Send in a, a new constructor from base. Use that to rebuild the metal extractor. And then use the constructor that was already out here to continue building the platform. Because the point is that you just don't want to have your metal income drop if you can avoid it. But building new metal extractors and rebuilding metal extractors is effectively the same thing in the early game. It's only in the mid game where you're not able to really take territory where it becomes very contested that rebuilding metal extractors becomes such a key element of success so i like the idea in theory in principle it's just a little bit early in the game for that to matter compared to the like it's just it's faster to build the metal extractors out here like in the time it took for the for this to get back here and build a metal extractor and build the lotus this entire platform could have been built up that's four metal per second extra compared to what's been made Anyway, at this point, though, we do have the fence, the Ronin coming in, and that is going to be a problem. Well, that's going to be a problem. Venoms are going to go down. The Redbacks are going to have a hard time. Ooh, I like the Reavers. Getting in there, taking care of the Venoms as they come. Try to assault the Ronin. This is a really nice force. I like the combination. The only downside, of course, being the Redbacks. The Redbacks do pretty much counter both Ronin and Reavers, so it's important to be careful here. The problem, of course, is that there's not a whole lot that actually is going to counter the Redbacks other than the Ronin. And the Recluses are making the, that life miserable. At the same time, having to destroy the Fencers... Sorry, having to destroy the Reavers... That's going to make life... Well, that's going to make a Flea counter push effective. But I don't expect to see that. Or Venom counter push also effective. But again, I don't expect to see either of those things. I would kind of like to have seen some Glaives in the Wings. Like, you know, use the Ronin to get rid of some of the Redbacks. And then have the Glaives in the Wings and possibly flanking so you can get rid of the Recluses. That way, FFC has to deal with both of that. Granted, that is a bit of a micro-challenge, so I understand why it wouldn't be the most appealing thing to do. But it is not a bad idea. The Recluses are going to be a problem. They are going to be making the Ronin's life miserable. And that's the main reason the Redbacks are still hanging on here. And it helps that it's also attacking right next to FFC's base. They can keep producing more units to come in and help out. Uncast, on the other hand, of course, having to go across the entire map. But I would say... Yeah, there's the Glaives, actually. So we do have that as, it looks like more of a raiding force. Not so much a flanking force, just as a way of getting around the side here and taking out element, taking out areas of the map that haven't really been attacked. Like, so Uncast attacking this this northwest platform and then sending Glaives over to the southwest, partly to help with the Conjurer, most likely to attack this expansion over to the southwest. Not a bad idea, all things considered. I, I totally agree. I just think that it might be a little bit iffy on the basis that... This is a couple Venoms. There are enough Glaives it shouldn't be a problem, but it'll be risky, and I think the Glaives will win a Pyrrhic victory. At the same time, though, the Ronin are doing okay. Again, the Redbacks are causing problems, especially as the Ronin numbers increase. The Redbacks' more erratic aim becomes less of a problem as the Ronin become more numerous. However, there are the Glaives. That's exactly what I wanted to see. The Glaives coming in the back, just making sure to deal with this stuff. Is Uncast, are you watching the stream? No, apparently not. I mean, this stream's on a two-minute delay, so it's not a huge deal if someone's watching it. Just if I say something, and then two minutes later, the person does it, it's like, okay, I guess you're listening to my advice. Cool, I'm not playing the game for you. And this is actually where the Glaives become a bit of a problem. FSC already saw that coming. Sending in a Phoenix, wiping out pretty much the entire force of Glaives. Oh, man, those... Re actually, all but one. Yeah, those recluses are fine. At the same time, Ronan able to get a bit of a harassment in, which is at least a bit of consolation. But again, there's that Phoenix coming in here, and that is going to be a problem. Phoenix comes in, sends down a wave of bombs, sends down the fire, and that's wiping out basically all the run in. Uncast has essentially no army. Their main base, they're trying to build up what they can, but having lost that entire army is huge. At this point, FSC should be able to take out this platform right here. Possibly take out another one on top of that if they go for it. Uncast, on the other hand, they do have a huge amount of metal income. I mean, the problem right now is just a lack of energy. But... It's still a huge issue. The lack of energy, the lack of production value, the fact that they just accessed a bunch while losing their army. FFC is feeling great. FFC's got everything they need. Uncast is running into some trouble. They at least have been expanding quite effectively. Uncast has taken half the map. I like that. Players coming in here trying to help get rid of these redbacks, but, or recluses rather, not the redbacks, hope. It's certainly not going to work against the redbacks. 
But unfortunately, it's just very difficult to deal with them on this platform. Uh, it's one of the nice things about the Ronin is that it kind of forces into a bad situation, but the main nice thing would have been having the Glaives on this fight, on this flat platform fight, because there the spiders have no advantage. And at this point, spiders are coming in to try to deal with another flat platform, but there's enough recklessness, they don't have to worry about anything. They can just sort of slowly make their way in. And on top of that, we already have seen FFC switched over to air. Now, at the same time, there is a switch over to air from Uncast, which is just completed, probably for Swifts and such to help get rid of that. And I do like the idea. I mean, if you go for air or for Uncast, they can go from the air to Swifts, gain air control, use that to build up some bombers, especially if they get their own Phoenixes. They can start wiping out a lot of these forces. FFC has been clumping up their spiders a lot. So a few Phoenixes coming in here would do the trick. I just don't know if that's even going to happen. Clearly, Uncast is very focused on maintaining the ground force. And the problem right now is, how do they get in here? I, you can't really flank easily because the, rec the redbacks are right here. But attacking straight, straightforwardly, of course, the Recklesses are putting a stop to that. So at this point, I feel like Uncast just needs to hold the line until they can get enough air control to start getting rid of these forces with bombers. That seems to be what they have in mind. Or at the very least, getting rid of the forces with bombers being seen as just an end in itself. Not a bad idea. I mean, it's, you know, it's a thing to get rid of. You do want to get rid of the bombers if you can help it. But at this point, I don't know if it's going to matter. FSC has such a large ground force. They have a 6,000 metal attrition advantage over Uncast. And while Uncast did have a lot of reclaim to work with, they didn't really turn that into a huge army. So at this point, I don't see FFC being able to lose easily. Uncast, however, is going to try to prove me wrong. Sending in a Phoenix. Probably getting rid of the Recluses. Please get rid of the Recluses. That's the target of choice. Well, at the very least, distracting the Recluses. Actually, this would be a really good time to send in some ground forces. But unfortunately, it looks like they're all dead. Ah, what happened to the Phoenix? That was weird. That should have been attacking. Oh, it's on hold fire. That's okay, yeah. Watch your fire stays. I think Ungus might have accidentally clicked the fire stay button because they've set the factory to hold fire. I think that might have accident that might have been a mistake. It's not hard to do that. Well, it's actually not easy to do that, but it could happen. They could have said a hot they accidentally pressed. That's unfortunate. Oh. Well, anyway, that... Oh. Yeah, this game is kind of a thing. So, just addressing a bit of chat. So, you may be wondering, why did I pick this game? Because this game is kind of a bit lopsided. Uncast has been a newer player. Not surprising. I haven't casted Uncast yet. I already casted Mana 12. I mean, granted, it was in a short thing. I might want to do a full game of Mana 12. And I like the idea of Mana 12 King Stat. It's just that I... I, thought, I figured, I already casted Mana 12. I can't do that again right away. But that is a fair point. You know what? Let's let's do that, actually. Let's switch over to Mana 12 and Kingstead. Because Mana 12 Kingstead is going to be a very good match. It's already eight minutes in, but it won't be over. So you know what? Why not? Oh, also, Perfidy Dude Guy, Grid, d asking if Grid matters that this level of play or higher. It does, but mostly because at this level of play, its metal advantage is kind of hard to come by, so any metal advantage is good. And Overdrive, even if it is only like three or four metal per second, could still be enough of an advantage to provide a little bit extra in terms of economy, a little bit extra in terms of production, in terms of power. Okay, what is going on here? Is this Jump, jump Off versus Spider? No, Gunja versus Spider. Blast Wings start right off the bat. Mana Toll defending against that expertly with a use of good use of pickets. Coming as a revenge, but good shield swap over from Kingstead. Able to at least push back the forces coming in. Mana Toll, however, able to do a lot of damage here. But the Thunderbird, as always, coming in, wiping out Mana Toll's forces, or at least disabling them, so they can't do much. So Mana 12 and Kingstead, eight minutes into the game, at a bit of an even mark. After a bit of early harassment, but... Kingstad with a stronger force having destroyed pretty much everything Mana had built up. But Mana 12, on the other hand, they do have Ravens. They do have the potential, the potential to build Thunderbirds. The question, of course, is... Oh, wait, that was... Hang on. No, that was Thunderbirds that were from Manu 12 that accidentally killed their own forces. My bad. Got that backwards. Hard to see when it's going as fast as it was. But Kingstad is going to be actually in a bit of an iffy spot. Because Mana 12 went Spider, they have an easier time building up the platforms. As we saw in the previous game, it's quite easy to build up on the platforms as Spider, build up some defenses, build up wind generators. 
Which actually Commander 12 isn't doing any of. Same time, there's the Thunderbird coming in again, disarming the entire force of King's Dead, showing why it's very powerful and why a lot of people are saying it's overpowered, which it does feel like it kind of twists the game a little bit. Like, you know, if you have if you have Thunderbirds, you just have Thunderbirds, and that's kind of how you play it. I don't know. It just seems like one of those things where I I can see the argument. I really can. I don't like saying things are overpowered, but sometimes you just gotta admit it that some things are really useful. At this point, with that King's Dead losing most of their army, Mana 12 not really spending a whole lot of resources resistance either. Three red, three or four redbacks coming in here, wiping out basically King's Dead's entire force. And King's Dead, they do have some felons, they do have some forces, well, more Thug Law Ball, sort of. But the existing Thug Law Ball was gone, and you've got to just... Actually, hang on. There is no Thug Law Ball. There was a felon being built up, but that's not doing it. I mean, the Aspis is at least something to help help a little bit. No, come in, do some damage. I don't know. Feels like it's not really going to be affecting all that much. While at the same time, Mana 12 sending... Wait, why are they sending these forces? Okay, no. Get those... Get those Gravens rearmed, then go in. Much better. But at this point, yeah, we do have Felons, we do have Aspis, so there is at least a little bit of a way of raiding with some air defense. I actually look quite like the fact that the Vandals are with this group, because then they can come and help with defending any Ravens or... Anything. Ravens, Thunderbirds, Phoenixes. They come in and try to destroy the group. Well, maybe not Maybe not Thunderbirds. But definitely Ravens and Phoenixes that try to come into the group. Now, the Felon Vandal combination will help. Ooh, and Tridents as well. Unfortunately, great shot with the Raven. Getting rid of a couple of, a couple of builders. That leaves this area out in the open. Which, admittedly, not a whole lot of follow-up forces to deal with it. But, hey, that does slow things down. You always want to get rid of your opponent's constructors if you have the choice. Just because it means you have to spend that much more time rebuilding constructors and sending them back in. And that entire area can't be expanded to. Having not destroyed the metal extractors, though, there isn't a whole lot of material advantage. Just because the Kingstad still has that metal. It's just they can't rebuild it if they had to. Which, they don't have to. The Raven's not even coming... Why is the Raven not coming in to kill things? The Raven should be killing things! That's what Ravens do! Actually, a lot of Ravens could come in here. I wonder if there's going to be a shot for the commander. I don't expect so. There is over the crab! As people were mentioning in Twitch chat, actually, this map would be good for crab. I don't entirely agree. These higher sections, yes, it does help. The lower sections, the flatter sections, there's nowhere for the crab to go. I'm actually not sure if this map is terraformable, to be honest. I haven't really played on it myself, and I have a feeling it isn't. I have a feeling the hardness is set to some ludicrously high value, if it's terraformable at all. But maybe. At any rate, the crab is still able to do some damage, and there it is, getting rid of all the metal extractors. A little later than it could have been, but hey, it does get rid of the metal extractors, does mean the constructor has to spend that much more time, but the constructor was already there. So it's more a matter of if this convict dies. If the convict dies, then great. For King's Dead, not for Man or sorry, for Manitoba, not for King's Dead. King's Dead's having a hard time here, but at the same time, King's Dead is able to still build up, They're able to rebuild this northern metal extractor set, and able to maintain a bit of a line. Back to the north, it might be splitting north south. Mana 12 is primarily focused on the air force. They don't have much except for spiders, sorry, except for crabs going for the spider for the ground force. A good defensive option. But Mana 12, while their commander's up front, starting to build up, helping set up some of these metal extractors. They aren't really doing much else other than, you know, killing a few things with ravens. But again, this is exactly what I was talking about. The Felon coming in, getting rid of all, almost all of these ravens. That is Mana 12 losing the vast majority of their army. King's Dead still with a nutrition advantage. And on top of that, all these fleas here, they're going to try. They are going to try. The Felon, however, will be able to wipe them out. That's just not going to happen. Valiant effort, but didn't even bust through the shields of the Felon. So at this point, yeah, the crabs there will help defend... But King's Dead has a very strong, versatile ground force. Not as much in the way of air force, but they do still have the tridents up, so... Yeah, ravens can bomb those out, but the number of ravens has been massively reduced from that one assault. Like, Mana 12 is really hurting as far as army size goes. Economically speaking, they're fairly even, so King's Dead is just a matter of when they push in. And of course, on top of that, the Racketeers making sure that Crab can't really do all that much. So right now, Mana 12 relying entirely on their commander to defend this platform, which I don't see being assaulted anytime soon, mainly because King's Dead has better ideas in mind. Going further south, dealing with this crab will be fairly easy. Again, the Racketeers are available to just take that out. Unfortunately, though, that Felon is going to be stunned out. Actually, everything is stunned out. There's the Thunderbird coming in again. Does get killed, though. 
Not in time, but at least the Vandals do their job before the Thunderbird is able to retreat. But another Thunderbird has already been built, so it's not going to be a huge deal. On top of that, second crab coming in here, wiping out the rest of these forces. The Vandals able to escape, but everything else will be going down. The second Thunderbird, just in case, has been built up. But will... Oh, will it go down? Will it go down? It will not go down. It, oh, just barely. At the very last second, the, that Thunderbird goes down into the void. Just gone. Into the depths of the clouds below. That Thunderbird is dead and gone. At this point, that still gives Manu 12 a great deal of room to just push in. Those crabs able to put everything. There's no forces to contest with. Wait, what the heck? Oh, the tridents in the clouds. That cute. Makes sense. Kind of silly. But at the same time, there's all those vandals. There's not a whole lot that Manu 12 can do with their assault force in the air, but their assault force on the ground has been doing a fine job. Oh, nicely done. Redback coming in here. I mean, okay, coming in anyway, but I like that. Just set up on the side of the map, just to get it that much closer to the top, to the sky. So the Tridents have a harder time escaping it. That is clever. But at this point, Mana 12. What are their options? They're going for Redbacks. The Crab's still in play, but the Crabs are having a hard time staying alive. The Redbacks at least helping defend. That's the one thing. Like, the Racketeers are wiping out the Crab somewhat. But they aren't able to kill it. The Redback able to come in, help defend... Help save the day with the crab. But it's still a tough situation. At the same time, these tridents are just hidden here. I actually kind of like this. Just hide the tridents in the clouds. Anything tries to come in, it doesn't realize the tridents are here unless you're zoomed down enough to get icon view. That is kind of cute. At the same time, the, ooh. I think the tridents can actually be hit by the crab at this point. Well, maybe. Same time, this is the main problem, though. That is the crabs. Crabs coming in the main base. King's dead, not able to hold the line. I like the way King's dead was defending, but unfortunately the ground army was never really able to get in a good spot. That was always the problem going in. Their ground army simply kept getting destroyed. The Thunderbirds kept coming in. I mean, I hate to say it, but this game was kind of won by the Thunderbirds. On their backs, the game was taken in favor of Manu 12. I mean, while there are these tridents that are in here that are sneaky, kind of sneaky, wiping out any incoming ravens as best they can, or trying to hit the stuff on the side. Not going to be enough. The main base is gone. Shield Factory is about to go down. I like that these bandits are trying. They are really giving it their all. They might be able to get rid of one of the crabs. Maybe it's... it. And no. Nah, it's, it's not happening, I'm afraid. That is going to be Mana 12. Just wiping everything out. These crabs, they went down, sure, but Mana 12 has twice the economy. They have most of the map. Are there any rebuilding factories being set up? No, Kingstead not going for that either. So at this point, Kingstead just able to maybe get rid of the crab. The Racketeer will help, but it's just it's not going to matter. The crab will go down to the bandits, but there's the follow-up force. Redback's coming to get rid of the, the bandits. King's Dad's commander might be able to defend against the Redbacks, but I kind of doubt it. The bandits will not be a threat to the Redbacks. King's Dad's commander might be, but generally speaking, if you use Red Riots, you're kind of using a lightweight assault. So, no, King's Dad's commander is not going to be able to deal with this. Not with that issue, and that issue is mainly the King's Dad's going to lose the rest of their base, and they have nothing to build on, so this is going to be an attempt to rebuild. Cloakymon Factory with size. There's the King's Dad special. Size coming in. I don't know exactly where they're going to be used, but hey, at least there's some, something, somewhere to try to deal with everything that Mana 12 has thrown at them. Certainly must give King's Dad props for trying. And this, like I said, might be able to do something. But again, King's Dad is way behind for economy. They're, okay, they're, okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating. They're, they're behind in terms of economy. They still haven't lost all this stuff up here. They're getting a lot of reclaim, and it's not accessing, so it's just going to storage. So it will be useful for the Cloakabot Factory, and as this, you know, gets built up, and as conjures get built up, and characters get built up, this is actually going to be a reasonably effective, possibly a reasonably effective comeback mechanism. It's going to be tricky. I mean, Kingstead is relying entirely on Reclaim, and that Reclaim is limited. Like, the caretakers are going down. The Wasp already went down. So, not a whole lot of reclaim is available, but Kingstead is at least trying. Able, able to get rid of Metal Extractor 2, that's 6 metal per second. Hey, every little bit counts. 
Kingsnet actually is not that far behind numbers-wise as far as attrition goes either. So this could be remarkably effective. Again, it kind of comes down to the use of the Thunderbird, which is coming in here. Actually, is that the only one? No, there are two Thunderbirds. The other one is fairly heavily damaged, though. Where are both of them? Oh, I see. It's being built, not heavily damaged. It's under construction. My bad. And that means Kingstad will be able to at least get their economy roughly on track. Sides coming in here in the main base. Only a couple of Lotuses defending against that. This fusion plant, if it goes down, that's going to be a fair bit of overdrive gone. Some more Sides coming in here. Gets rid of the fusion plant. That's fusion plant down. There's still more options here. I think air pad's probably the best one to go for. Or the caretakers. And that is indeed where Kingstad's going. Get rid of those caretakers. Unfortunately, only able to get rid of one. So that is... That is a thing. It happens. Same time, though, Kingstad's able to maintain a lot of their forces. I mean, the crab has been forced back. Or they're not able to do that much. Kingstad's able to re rebuild somewhat, but it's just a matter of what can they get in terms of economy. The crabs are going to be coming into the new factory. This is a matter of time. I unless something has been built up to actually specifically deal with the crabs, like, even ticks wouldn't help. Phantoms, phantoms might help as they're moving. But that has not been built. I'm not sure Kingstad thinks they have the money to do that. Again, this is entirely based on reclaim. That's all Kingstad has. Now, the Redback's not going to be able to do much, but the Crab, that's the real question. What can the Crab do? Oh, I can help get rid of some of the Stingers, that's for sure. Oh, it can't. Just barely out of range. Kingstad is... Are they aware of this? Are they aware there's something? They're probably aware from memory that it's a Crab. Or just the fact that Mano 12 seems to be really loving crabs right now. But I don't know if King is going to be able to actually deal with it. Oh! Well, they're going to try! They're going to try. Try being the operative word. Sly is not really able to do too much. What can you do? Get revealed! Because you were too close to a glaive. So, with that, I don't really know how King is going to be able to pull this back. They've just got... Nothing that can really deal with the Thunderbirds. The crabs are closing in. They have Phantoms being built up. I like that. But three crabs closing in on all sides. I just don't know where they have this. Yep, there's the Thunderbird coming in. Gonna be stopping the Phantom from building up in the first place. That is gonna be game. Or should be game. I mean, Kingshead rebuilding their main base. They're not done. No, they are done yet. There's the GG. That is game. Throwing in the towel after a hard-fought fight. Okay. Twitch chat was right. Really should have gone for that one instead. I don't know about that new. I just haven't seen it before. It hasn't really been played. If I had to guess, I would say it's actually a reasonably old map that no one ever plays. But the way the tournaments are organized, that is kind of how it goes. Like, oftentimes there are maps that are just not played very often. So... Are we still in a position where we have... No, we are in round three, or just about. So I'm going to switch over to a small break, and we'll be back with round three.